Welcome back to another video guys. Yesterday we were talking about Terra Luna against the USD chart. Now let's rewind to yesterday and see what I was saying in my previous video and see how that played out. This is where it's getting interesting for me. So for me, because we were in this strong channel here and we've broken out of it, I feel like we're going to need further sell-offs. It feels like it's a dead cat bounce attempt to recovery. Now there are a couple of bullish and bearish patterns to take into account here. First one being we've fallen out of this big orange uptrend. So technically we're still bearish as we've not broken back into it. So we've then formed the second bearish pattern in this uptrend. Thirdly, the third bearish pattern is I can see right here a double top M pattern. Typically when they break they continue to fall. If we drop it down to the hourly as you can see this double M pattern here is supported at the neckline by these dotted lines. If we zoom in right here we've broken past it now and we've come up retested it and now it looks like we're selling back off. The price target on this bearish pattern I've taken from here to here. So from the bottom of the wedge that's the price target and I bring up here where we break out. Now it's pointing towards this blue line which could be acting as support. The VPVR on the four hour, we've been rejected from up here. We've come down. This is very thin on the VPVR so we've had major sell-offs here. If we do break this further, I can see us selling off and there's literally nothing. There's no volume support coming all the way until down here. The price target is in confluence with the VPVR there. This is the point of control and we've fallen, we've fallen past this. However, there's so many bearish structures at play here, I think they're going to overcome these small term bullish indications. As you can see, it's come down, W'd out, firmed off the W, proceeded to go upwards into another bearish pattern, which is a rising wedge. You could trade this as a bear flag, but personally, I like to see this more as a rising wedge. With this rising wedge, if we were to take the measured move from the previous swing high right there to the recent swing low, the confluence of the price target is hitting the golden pocket again. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if Luna is to hit here before potentially reversing around this zone here, which is also in confluence where the bulk of the VPVR starts coming in as well. Yesterday, I made a price prediction that Terra Luna would continue its fall from the rising wedge from $81 all the way down to 74. Let's see how that played out, shall we? Now, from the measured move yesterday, if you took a short position from $81 down to the current price, yeah, that would be coming in at a conservative 9%. 9% on 10x leverage is 90% profit. And even if you wanted to be more conservative and only use a 5x leverage, then you'd be up 45%. Obviously, you shouldn't be trading unless you're an experienced trader. However, if you are interested in trading and you are an experienced trader, then I can send you my Bybit link. Of course, if you'd like to learn how to trade, if you'd like me to get into how I trade, then please leave a comment in the comment section below. I can maybe do a Bybit tutorial on how to trade on leverage, spot, and other utilities Bybit has. And if you are gonna trade on leverage, you may as well use Bybit. It has the highest liquidity of many exchanges on the market right now. Now looking back over the BTC chart over the last year, I found a certain pattern that played out a lot over 2021. And it's probably my favorite pattern I like to wait for. And that pattern is the falling wedge. As you can see, I've zoomed out. I'm on the four hourly. We've got right here, falling wedge, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and potentially we're in an eighth bond now. What I find interesting about these fallen wedges is for me, they seem to be the most bullish, the highest performing patterns with the highest hit rate and the highest profitability rate. Let's take this fallen wedge, for example, this illustration here. A lot of traders will say you need at least five touch points, one, two, three, four, five, and a break. Now, sometimes these wedges can just break up and not look past like here. Other times they break up, come down, retest the previous resistance and turn that into support and then off to the races. Out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that I've played out so far, only one of them didn't work. So if we go through each one 
I think it's a good idea. If you're going to buy, it's not a bad idea to buy the wedge. This first wedge, what I look for is a nice wide wedge. The less space inside, the better. The more touch points as well, the more confluence. Also, the more it bounces off the corners here to here to here, the better as well. If it's just running down one side of the chart and then breaks to the bottom side, I don't really like it so much. I much prefer if it's bouncing and testing both sides. So right here, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight touch points. The minimum required is five. This one has eight, so it's a lot of confluence. Now, as you can see, the price has broke up, come down, retested, and then off to the races. A lot of traders would recommend you buy once it passes the previous breakout, so here. So yeah, you could buy here and yeah, you'd, you'd be in a lot of profit. However, personally, if I bought here and then it rolled back down on me, well, that roll is a 20% roll. If that's coming back down on me, if I'm on 10X leverage, well, I'm gonna get liquidated pretty much at 10% halfway. An alternative strategy would be to buy in this zone right here, right at the bottom of the wedge. Now, a falling wedge typically breaks to the upside. And when they break to the upside, they have a 66% hit rate. In these bull markets, it appears to be even higher. So my suggestion is to buy two thirds the way down the bottom of the wedge in the bottom support zone right here. This seems to be a sweet zone that has played out throughout the bull cycles. That one was a fail. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Second one, again, one, two, three, four, five, six touch points, perfect buy zone. Boom, off the races. This one right here is a diamond pattern, slightly different. The same rules apply. Again, another falling wedge, but this one has a lot of black space in it. And also it's just broke out of a pattern and now it's had a, a lower low so that's something to look for when you're trading the next pattern yes it did have a higher high but this one has a lower low also this wedge here it's not really broken up it's not had a higher high it's actually had a higher low could take a trade here but it's a high risk because the momentum seems to be running out therefore this one failed if the price is to break down like here what you need is a tight stop loss just below it round about here five six percent stop loss if you're trading on 5x leverage that's plenty and now and again you may take a small loss like here compared to the winning ones I think find yourself in profit this one right here is probably my favorite falling wedge because it's consolidated for a long time it's fallen down here touch one two three four five six seven eight touch points a nice break and then boom off to the races again another falling wedge testing both sides and here's a perfect buy zone boom off the races. Here's one final falling wedge. This one broke prematurely, so therefore I didn't. I don't think it, it got very far. You could have bought here, two thirds of the way down is your buy zone. You could have got a scam wick and bought your way in. Likely would have probably missed this one. Where we are at right now is interesting because we appear to be in another falling wedge. So far on this falling wedge, we could be testing this bottom side again. However, if we are testing this bottom side, in this bottom zone here, this is where the previous falling wedge was. So there is a fair bit of confluence here. This may act as support once again. I mean, it's come down and it's wicked down to these levels, but it's not yet had a wick lower. The danger of this is if this does break to the downside, you could see major sell-offs fairly quickly. So if you are to trade this, I would definitely put some form of stop loss in there just to protect your risk. However, you know, I think there could be a fair chance that this breaks to the upside. You could may well put a buy position in here and wait for it to test the upside and you could take a little bit of profit because you're gonna be in profit before you even break out. So if it does break out, come down, retest and off to the races again. That's my ideas for falling wedge on Bitcoin. That's where we're at at the moment. A good price target to look out for. Personally, I'm gonna be having buy set up in this, in this box right here. Really, this is probably your last chance right here. From here, you could potentially be buying the bottom and then you could be breaking to the upside. However, if you are breaking down here, there is a big danger you could have, you could be seeing major sell offs So I would say this box right here is the box that's on the fence. It can go either way from here. You know, once you break these levels here, that's probably when you're gonna start seeing explosions. Um, and again, you could see the same sort of explosions once you're breaking down here. Also, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you've got any questions, please remember to drop them in the comment box and I will reply to them as soon as I can.